Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone, and thanks very much for joining us. The constant viewer knows that at the end of each year, we like to spend a half hour with our United States senators, our two U.S. senators. Once again this year, Mr. Cotton, Senator Cotton, is unable to join us, but we're grateful that the Honorable John Bozeman can do so from direct from Washington, D.C. Senator, thanks very much for coming aboard. Thank you for having me, Steve, as always. And uh, as an avid viewer, this is something that I just kind of set my clock by this time of the year. It's good to be with you. Well, thanks very much for making yourself available again, Senator. It has been quite a tumultuous year. Uh, could you sum it up now that we have an election in the rearview mirror? No, it would take a while to sum up. We, Since we last visited in person there, we've had uh, all kinds of things happen. We've had an impeachment. Uh, we've had the virus then strike in the midst of that. And then all of the uh, the different things that have occurred. There's been some bright spots uh, in the sense of the vaccination that's unfolding right now, but uh, it's been a it's been a tumultuous year. Well, and we should point out for the benefit of the audience that owing to your schedule and ours, we are preparing this broadcast, taping this broadcast on December the 15th. So we're going to be a bit thematic. But as you just noticed. As we speak, practically the very first immunizations of, uh, uh, for COVID-19 yes. are being administered. Uh, from your perspective, is the U.S., is the, is the national health establishment prepared to move on this in an organized fashion that, that the clinicians say has to be accomplished? Yes, sir, I believe we are. We, we are working so hard. Uh, first of all, we can be so proud of the country, the, the getting this done and in a, um, a speed that nobody imagined. Uh, I was talking to, to Senator Dr. Barrasso today, and he, he equated this to the discovery of penicillin. This is really a, a huge deal. It's a different vaccination, vaccination protocol than what we've had in the past with a 95% efficacy or in that range. 65% is considered great. So this is something that uh, is, is uh, the path to normalcy. But I know that, that everybody is going to be working, and, and money's not going to be a factor. It's just the organization factor. But I know all of us are going to be doing whatever we take at every level uh, of, of government and just volunteering or whatever uh, to make this available. I'm told that by the end of uh, April, early May, that every American that wants to take the vaccination will have that opportunity by then. Well, as, as being someone in a position of responsibility, uh, are you, would you are you prepared to urge every Arkansan, every American, to take advantage of that uh, uh, immunization, that vaccine? No, I, I am very much, uh, you know, encouraging. I would I would take my uh, vaccination with you or whoever on on television. On the other hand, I want to be sure and, and keep my place in line as we go forward. But no, this is something that that I am uh, so looking forward to taking the vaccination and also having my family uh, take the vaccination uh, to protect us. Uh, we were talking earlier, I, I know so many people that have been very, very ill and uh, several in the past three or four weeks have actually succumbed to the disease. So this is a serious thing. It's the path to normalcy. And so I will do everything I can do and certainly uh, would encourage those to, to take the vaccine. Looking back over the past year, Senator, uh, the, the United States with a comparatively small, about 5% of the, 5, 6% of the world's population has an outsized percentage of the world's cases, both in diagnosed cases and in fatalities. Looking back on the federal government's uh, handling of this situation, how would you, how would you rate it? Well, I think we're going to have a, a big look back. There's all kinds of factors that came into play. Nobody uh, really understood the dependency that we had on overseas providers, people like China and India for the personal protective equipment that we needed. We didn't understand that most of our medicines were being made overseas, uh, either the medicine itself or the precursor to the medicine that we needed. Same was true of the actual, as we got into testing, uh, so many of the 
the paraphernalia that we needed also was being made overseas. So as a result of that, we, we need to have a very serious look back so that, uh, that we won't get ourselves in the same position. Supply chains, the list just goes on and on. And I don't think it's a matter of if we have another problem, it's when. With the global, the global situation that we have now, travel being so easy, people coming and going uh, at will, uh, this is something that, that really is, a, is something that I, a challenge that we're going to have to deal with, I think, in the future. Well, we, we are now past the challenge of the November election. Uh, are you satisfied today, December the 15th, that uh, Joseph R. Biden is the next president of the United States? Well, the Electoral College has met, and uh, they cast their votes, and so Joe Biden is now the president-elect. I think the president had every right to, to pursue whatever he wanted to pursue, uh, recounts. Uh, the court structure is one of the foundations of our country. You go to the courts when you're upset. But all of that stuff has been done, and at this point, uh, uh, the Electoral College has declared him the winner. And so, uh, yes, uh, he is the winner and, and uh, will be sworn in uh, fairly shortly. In, in your own mind, Senator, when was the election over? When were you satisfied? Well, the, the, I was satisfied. I think this is really important, Steve, about 35 percent, if we look at the polls, probably looking at the polls and, and seeing how they were in the past with the past election, I'd say 35, 40, maybe 45 percent of the population felt like the stuff went on, uh, that they were not pleased with, that perhaps the election was tampered with in a way great enough to make it such that it, it influenced the outcome of the election. And I, I think that all of the things that we did, all of the recounts, all of the uh, governors looking into this and that, uh, the courts getting involved. I think it's really important that we that that we we went through that in the sense to to make sure that uh, we do have confidence in our election 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 system. Uh, I believe that there was uh, things that occurred, and we're going to be following up on that. Uh, it not to the extent that it encouraged the, that it uh, made a difference with the outcome. So you you are confident then that as of I would say mid morning on November the fourth. The election was over and that it was conducted with that its results could be trusted well no because we really didn't with all of the absentee ba uh, absentee balance and stuff that came in for days after well no but you're correct and i apologize no, so, for that but no. let's let's no, give no, it a week then but, yeah. but 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 you know the process I, I think the important thing is the process played itself out uh, we're at the point now where we're going to have a new president-elect and now we need to get behind that and find areas of agreement that we can agree on and try and move the, the country forward uh, in, a, in a very difficult situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, we're not only battling the virus, we have a, a new uh, tremendous armament in the sense of the vaccine to, to, to fight that. On the other hand, we've got a very difficult economy. We've got people that are really suffering right now, uh, unemployment high, uh, some jobs not coming back. So that's going to take everybody working together. And I'm so pleased we're, we're in the midst now and trying to get another COVID package together. When you look at the, the past, uh, when we came and got a, the initial uh, package together, over $3 trillion total between the little packages and the big package, we didn't have a dissenting vote in the Senate. So we're quite capable of coming together, and we need to do that with these big things uh, and working our problems out. The, the, the reservations, put it mildly, that the objections that, that Mr. Trump lodged to uh, the election process in those five states, among others, but certainly the swing states, did that do, in your estimation, did that do damage to public confidence in democratic institutions? Well, I think the damage was already there, Steve. I, I live with this every day. I've been here for four years. I have colleagues. I have people that, that uh, you know, still talk about the Russian collusion, how the, the Russians collusion swung the election in the past. All of that is bogus. It's being proved bogus. And so uh, 
we're going to have the Electoral College coming up. Uh, if you remember, four years ago, several Democrats talked about Russian collusion uh, as they were going through the process in the House. They couldn't get a senator to go along with them, so that's as far as it went. But this is not a new thing. And so I, I, I in response to your question, I do, I am concerned about loss of faith in the institutions, but this is hardly the first shot. Well, in, in terms of the collusion, I think the, the, the conclusion was that there was not collusion, Senator, between the incumbent president or his campaign and the Russians, but still a great deal of uh, a measurable, profound intent by, say, the Russians to influence American elections. Maybe intent, but there was, no, there was nothing. The intent was there. Uh, the intent, I'm sure, was there this year and between the Russians and the Chinese and everybody else, but the idea that, that something was done by the Russians that made it such that we had an illegitimate president in President Trump is ridiculous, and that was uh, spread, uh, is still spread in some circles as we listen to some of the pundits. I still, still hear people talk about President Bush in Florida, uh, how, you know, he didn't win the election there, that it was the Supreme Court. The reality is all of the recounts that went on in Florida all proved that he was actually had the votes and, and, you know. So this is not a new thing, but it is something that, that we as a nation, Democrats and Republicans, need to work on because the American public does not trust any of us, and that's not a good situation. The One more, one more question on the Electoral College, sir. When, when the Congress meets on, uh, what is it, the 6th, I think, Yes, right. Uh, you're, that's right. Yeah, you have a colleague in Alabama, Mr. Brooks, who says he's going to object. Uh, he'll need a senator. Do you think he'll get one? I don't to, think to so. To challenge the, yeah. Yes, sir, I don't think so. I, again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, in 2016, 17, 2017, right after the 2016 election, several Democrats objected, but they could not find a senator to go along. I, I have not heard anybody now that that is going to make that move. And if they did, we would have a discussion, we'd have a vote, and then it would be over and we would move on. Uh, about the future, one more, I guess, Senator, and that's about the future, the, the temperature anyway, of your party, the Republican Party. Will Mr. Trump, after January, will he continue to be the dominant force, the dominant voice uh, in the GOP? I, th I think that remains to be seen. Uh, the, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm, I'm sure he's going to get uh, with his business ventures and things like that. Uh, so, again, we'll have to wait and see. I, I was really pleased with the great gains that Republicans made. Uh, they were predicted to lose many seats in the House of Representatives, wound up gaining a bunch. Uh, the, the closeness of the House right now, it goes back to... I believe the year 2000, and it's the closest the Democrats have been in regarding their, when they had the uh, majority, it's the closest since 1942. So we picked up seats there. I believe that we hold the Senate, and then also we picked up a number of state legislatures. So I think the Republican Party did very well, and we'll have to wait and see who steps forward. Uh, to fill uh, shoes, and there's definitely sh shoes to be filled. Let me Before we go into uh, uh, the next Congress, or let's look back on this, the, the one that's coming to a close now. You had a pretty successful year in terms of veterans' legislation. We did, Steve, and, and that's so important. And, and, again, it was Democrats working with Republicans working together. The Veterans Affairs Committee is very bipartisan. Uh, you know, when you talk about veterans, you're not talking about Democrat veterans and Republican veterans. You're talking about veterans. So we were able to pass uh, working with our colleagues. Uh, we worked with Senator Warner on one bill that had to do with veteran suicide that I think is really going to make a real difference. It puts metrics in place. It, it allows for grants to people in the community that are doing a really good job in suicide prevention. We worked with Senator Tester on a very sweeping women's bill that makes it such that, that it just ensures and goes forward with the idea that women veterans are going to get the quality of care that they need. We're working hard to do that now. This gives them more resources. Uh, the VA system was set up for males because it was such a male-dominated uh, entity. 
now we have so many women serving, so many women veterans, uh, they have different needs, and we're going to make sure that we meet those. Now, now, on to January, sir. What kind of Senate will President Biden encounter? He's obviously his party controls. All, but he's got some problems in his own caucus and in, in the House. But what's what what's the Senate prepared to do? Well, I think the Senate is prepared again to tackle COVID and tackle the economy. And that's that's something that, that we just have to do. And I hope that we do that as we've done up to now in a very bipartisan way. So um, we'll have to wait and see what the House proposes and what uh, uh, President-elect Biden puts in place and then go from there. But But I hope that we focus on COVID, focus on getting the vaccine out, and focus on the economy. Uh, so many people are hurting, and uh, I think we have a, a great opportunity to be of, of tremendous help. The election being in the rear view mirror now, even as we tape this broadcast on the 15th, I believe the House and Senate leadership are, are scheduled to meet or their meeting is imminent anyway. With the election in the rear view mirror, can we move on an aid package? Will we have one yeah. by the time this program goes on the air? I believe so. The, we got caught up, as I said earlier, the previous aid packages that we've done, uh, we worked together. Uh, it was such that the Republicans and Democrats came together, not a dissenting vote in the Senate, because we passed these major packages really in a matter of weeks. I was on the school board. Uh, you know, when you were going to build a building or do this or that, you met for a long time. When I was part of a, my brother's and I's clinic, did the same thing. Uh, you met and, and determined, you know, the, the, what the demographics were, the cost. On we did all this in three or four weeks, and and really came up with a package that that I think was su very successful, considering. So uh, yes, we can come together. We can do it. We got caught up in the election politics, which this year was on steroids. Uh, Speaker Pelosi was not crazy about giving the the president another win, and so as a result, it. it was pushed till after the election, but it's time to, it's time to help those that are unemployed. It's time to give additional funding to uh, educators, uh, our schools, uh, things like that, our hospitals, uh, and then our small businesses that are that are suffering so much. One of the snags was state and local government, sir. Are you incorpor incorporating that uh, into the aid package that you're discussing that you envision? <clears throat> There's two snags that are going on: uh, aid to local states and government, and then also, uh, uh, you know, another situation. And so we're trying to trade off those two uh, such that we can come up with a, a, a compromise. But you would see an aid package evolving for state and local governments? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> All right, sir. These, these, it's difficult because your, your viewers are going to hear this later. But uh, right now, something that we are very concerned about that's so important is liability protection. Liability protection is something that Republicans will be pushing. Uh, this is important for our businesses. It's also very important for our schools and universities. So we would like to do liability protection. Uh, they would like to do state and local governments. Uh, to the point that a lot of these state and local governments have gotten themselves in trouble uh, prior to the COVID package. We're talking about massive amounts of money. So right now, uh, I think there's an agreement to set this aside right, right during the circumstances before the first of the year, get through the first of the year, helping those that we all agree on and then moving forward and looking at that after the, the first of the year. Well, what about infrastructure, sir? I mean, it's, it seems to be the, one of the standing, I guess you could say it's a standing joke in, in Washington, is that it's always infrastructure week, but, but a bill somehow never emerges. Can something change in January or in the coming year? No, I think so. We, we, I'm on the Environment and Public Works Committee. That's, that ha is our jurisdiction. We passed a bill unanimously, Democrats and Republicans, working together. Uh, that was delayed. We had a continuing resolution to the end of this this next year. 
And so uh, that's something we're going to be working on very, very hard. Now, we do do infrastructure. 40% on average of a state's budget, the infrastructure dollars they spend comes from the federal government. This is the big five-year package that we do that, that is expired. This is the one that we were able to pass out of committee. And then we got caught up in the election politics and, and it was put aside. But we will be working on that very, very hard. It's so important for Arkansas. It's so important for the country. But if you don't do it in a timely fashion, then uh, they quit letting uh, contracts. And, uh, and that's a difficult situation. So, yeah, we'll get it done. All right, Mr. Mr. Biden says that he wants to move in a big way on the environment, uh, not necessarily the Green New Deal. As a matter of fact, he says he hasn't signed on to the Green New Deal, but certainly clean energy and some other aspects, and and wants to rejoin the Paris Accords. What kind of Senate, what what is your thinking on that? Well, we'll have to see what he what he comes out with. But the Green New Deal, the, some of the things that they've come out with so far, would massively increase electricity bills, massively increase gasoline prices. And then two, uh, as you do those things, energy costs go up such that it makes it really difficult for our manufacturers, particularly our heavy manuf manufacturers, to compete overseas. So we need to use our heads. Certainly the environment is so important. We can be proud of the progress that we've made in the last uh, uh, several years. The United States has actually been a leader in that regard. Uh, we can continue to do that, but we have to use the science, but we also have to use common sense. And some of the uh, some of the stuff that they've come out with so far has not used common sense. So I hope that President Biden will come out with some things that, uh, you know, that we can get behind and actually get done. I'm get very active in the Agriculture Committee. It's really exciting, the technology that's coming about there. We have the sensors available uh, that that can tell you if you're putting the right amount of pesticide on, the right amount of water, all of those kind of things. Uh, all of that will help in, in making sure that we're not excessively using things. The other thing it does too is it makes sure that you're using enough so it helps production. So there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon using technology that I think uh, will make a real difference regarding the environment. Yeah, Mr. Biden says that he wants to roll back some of the rollbacks on uh, on EPA. Uh, is that doable? Uh, it depends on what he's rolling back. Well, he's talking about uh, again, in some cases, yeah, uh, water quality, water standards, pesticides. Well, we'll we'll have to wait and see what he comes out with, and 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 then you know he's going to need. Uh, cooperation from both sides. And so uh, if he overreaches, which they have in the House so far, I think he'll have a difficult time. A couple of your colleagues are on the ballot uh, in, in, in Georgia in, uh, in January. Their fate to be decided. Should they prevail, I believe you can be chair of the Ag Committee. Am I correct there? You're correct. And that's something that would be a great honor and certainly it's, it's you know, something uh, where I think we could make a difference uh, working with fellow Arkansans, working with uh, fellow Americans, and, and really make a difference in regarding agriculture. Uh, it's a difficult situation for, our, for our, our farmers right now and our ranchers. Commodity prices are very low. Trade policy uh, really affected them. We've kind of gotten that sorted out regarding trade policy. We need to look for new markets uh, constantly. Uh, but this is 25% of Arkansas's economy, their GDP. But if you get outside, Steve, and you know this so very well, being an Arkansan, you get outside of any community of any size, and it's probably 85 or 90%. It's all about rural America. So I'm very excited about being a part of that and, and going to be working very, very hard in that direction. Can, can Mr. Biden, can the, can the trade situation, particularly with China, be cooled even further? I think so. You not know, just on the, the ag side, Senator, not just on the ag side, but on the no, manufacturing. No, no. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I believe so. Uh, the president, to his credit, got really tough with China and tough to the point that he really did impact their, their economy. And so they came back and said, you know, we're going to start playing by the rules and really came out with some uh, uh, agreements that we've made regarding uh, things that they're going to be buying that it's not just going to be the one-way street of America buying all the Chinese products 
and us not having, uh, you know, not a, a competitive uh, level playing field with China. So I think that we're in a good place right now, and I believe that uh, President Biden, future President Biden, will, uh, you know, try and work in that, in that, in the same vein. If not, we will push him to do that. Got to end it there, Senator, because we're simply out of time, and we thank you, as always, for yours. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I look forward to being with you in person. All right, good. Have a good and safe holiday. And you too. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89.